I'm starting to notice a major problem with this fictional American bullet train that I'm making. I've made so many different versions for different destinations, and uh, these trains take up a lot of space, so I'm going to need to find a more efficient way to do this, like having a list of destinations that you can select from, similar to how the um, New York City subway cars on this game work. Otherwise, you're going to need an insane amount of space on your computer just to run these trains. That's why in this series, we're going to be taking apart the script of this New York City subway R46 in order to see exactly what parts of the script controls the destination signs and what I will have to do to the trains that I currently have in order to make them compatible with this script. Now, before we begin, it should be noted that some scripts are copyrighted, which means you will need the original creator's permission before you can use it on your own train. But, as it turns out, the script used on this train car is open source. It'll usually say somewhere in the script, usually in the beginning, whether or not you're allowed to use it. Now, there are two versions of this R46 subway car. And we're going to be looking at both of them to see if there are any differences in how the destination signs are programmed on here. First, we're going to look at the dependencies of these train cars to see if any of them are scripted and whether or not that affects how the destination signs are programmed. The main thing I'm concerned about is the LCD textures. This is basically a texture library. I have never made a texture library before, so I'm not entirely sure how they're set up. Let's look at it real quick to see what it is. So I'm guessing this is the default texture that appears when no other texture is selected. I also plan on making a not in service option for my trains going forward. Personally, I've never been a fan of .tga files because there's nothing on my computer that can open them. GIMP is literally the only thing I have that can open these, and it's so annoying. That's the main reason why I primarily use PNG files. It looks like every single thing that the destination sign is capable of displaying for the destination you selected is all in one texture file. So that's one thing I'm going to have to change about my destination signs, because my destination signs, there are two of them, and each one can display up to four rows of text and each row of text is a different texture which is not really that efficient now that I think about it but I'm going to take all eight rows of text and place them in the same file for this to work. It is doable it's just gonna take a while. Also since my destination signs have albedo, normal, and parameter textures. I'm not sure how that's all going to factor in. I'm guessing I'm only going to be using the albedo textures for this. So I'm just going to have to set it up in such a way so that the normal and parameter ones won't affect how it's going to look. Okay, so far the texture library doesn't really look all that complicated. The kind has to be set to texture group and then you just list all of the textures that you're going to be using for this texture group, it looks like. From zero and up, and then you just name the texture that that's going to be assigned to. Okay, it looks like there's another thing called extensions, and then all of these textures get a name assigned to them, which it, it looks like it's the name that appears when you select them from the drop-down menu. So I'm guessing this is script-related, and then everything else is just standard stuff. Now, I'm not sure why the number 58843 exists behind the name Dest Names, but I'm guessing that's something that's script related. That's actually something I'm going to look into in the next part. I'm going to change that number just to see what happens if it affects the script at all. Because I've been wondering for a while what that number actually means or what it does. So it looks like the extensions list just assigns a name to each texture so that you can pick it in the drop-down menu. How to create the drop-down menu is the next thing I need to figure out. And I'm guessing that's somewhere hidden in the script. As usual, the texture.txt files are just 
well, they're written the same way they are pretty much always written in this game. Now what about this one which was modified by someone? Is it going to be set up in a different way? The texture files are named differently on this one, so that tells me that you can name them whatever you want and it won't affect the script. Now this one actually has added text on it because this one is programmed to display four rows of text, unlike the original one which could only do two rows of text. This tells me that there is no limitation to how many rows of text you can have as long as everything is in the same texture file. Okay, so far I'm not noticing any differences. The kind is still texture group and like the other one, the textures are all numbered and assigned a name, but I am noticing that there is one difference. That number that appears behind the word dest names is different than on the other one. And that makes me wonder if this number actually plays a role in the script or can it really just be anything and it not matter. It looks like in the extensions list is where you type how you want the texture to appear in the drop down menu. Now, I'm not sure if there's an upper limit to how many choices there can be, but I do know that in this game, the portals seem to stop working when you tell them to produce more than a certain amount of trains. So there probably is a limit based on the game's limitations, and it's probably similar to the limitations of the portal. Okay, next we're going to look at the train itself to see how it's set up. And I'm also going to look at the script to see if there's anything I can initially understand without tearing the script apart. Okay, I think I found something that's related to the string table we saw earlier in the texture group. I'm not entirely sure what a string or a string table are at this point, but I'm thinking it has something to do with the drop down menu. Now, I don't really need the parts of the scripts that control the head and tail lights because I'm using the game's built-in features for controlling that. I think this next part controls the running numbers. That's also something that I'm using the game's in-game features to control, so I'm probably not going to need this part of the script either. In fact, really the only thing I'm going to need is the destination signs part of the script. Okay, one thing I recently found out about scripts is if you see these two slashes followed by a space bar, all the text behind that is going to be ignored by the game and by the script. That is just for us to understand what this part of the script means. That's actually something that used to confuse me back when I was a child trying to learn how to use these scripts. I kept thinking, okay, look, some of this part is in English and some of these, these parts are... Um, in computer language, so how do I know whether to type something in English or not? But actually, it, it turns out the parts that are in English are just for us. Okay, the alpha number folder is where all the fonts for all the running numbers are kept. Basically, these are just the numbers 0 through 9, and it tells the game how you want these numbers to look when they appear on the locomotive. If you have more than one font, then the numbers have to be called 0A, 0B, 0C, etc. But if there's just one font, then you, you just put 0 through 9 with no letters behind them. I use the game's in-game system for running numbers, but this train uses a script for it. I'm still not sure what the art folder is for because it's been obsolete for quite some time. I don't think it does anything script-wise, so I don't think I'll need to keep this. I'm guessing the destination sign is stored in the body folder. 
the digit textures tell the game, this is where I want this digit to appear on the mesh of this locomotive. And it replaces this texture with whatever you have in the alpha number folder. It actually doesn't matter what this texture looks like because it's just going to be replaced. It's basically just a reference telling the game, this is where the number goes on the locomotive. A lot of times, if there's something wrong with the alpha numbers, these digit textures appear instead. You can have up to six digits, but most American locomotives only have four. So we use the last four digits a lot of times when placing alpha numbers on the locomotives. That's why you see three, four, five, and six, but you don't see one and two. On this train, the doors are attached to the locomotive with an attachment point. I don't usually use attachment points for the doors because I've had issues in the past where after the game updates, the doors don't attach to the locomotive correctly and then I have to recreate it from scratch. So I just completely threw out the idea of using attachment points. The .evt files tell the game, this is where I want this sound effect to play in this animation. But don't open it using whatever this thing is because this won't tell you how the file is set up. You'll have to open it using the notepad. Okay, this is the main body mesh for the locomotive and it looks like parts of this mesh are mapped to the texture file for the destination sign. What that tells me is you can have literally any mesh that's part of this locomotive and as long as it's mapped to the destination sign texture, it's replaceable. So you can actually have a different mesh that isn't part of the animation for the destination sign and it can still be replaced. The animation for the destination sign appears to be a different mesh than the locomotive because it's actually not in this mesh right now. This is the destination sign mesh. And it's actually animated exactly like the destinations on my trains are animated. Which means that I don't really have to change anything about how I animate them in order to make it compatible with this script. And that makes me happy because animating destination signs takes a really long time. Now we're going to look at the config file to see how the destination sign is set up. Over here where it says script, that tells the game what script you're using for this locomotive. In this case, controls.gs. Underneath that it says class, and that is labeled as R60O. I'm not entirely sure what the word class means, but one thing I do know is that every single scripted object in this game seems to also have a class. Now over here it says class R60O is class locomotive. And I'm guessing that's telling the game that this is a type of locomotive, so you need to script this like a locomotive. Another thing I'm going to check in the next part is what happens if you just say class locomotive instead? Like, is there a reason why it has to be done this way? Or can it really just be class locomotive and be done with it? I'm pretty sure there is a reason why it's set up like that. And that's another thing I'm going to explore in the next part. I'm going to see what happens if you change that. Now, in the list of effects, first it has all of the coronas that appear on the locomotive. And then on the bottom it says skin and it says kind texture replacement, texture root dot texture. What that tells the game I'm thinking is everything that's assigned to the texture root dot texture is replaceable. So that specific texture can be replaced with other textures. Now, if we actually go over to root dot texture to figure out which texture that is, It looks like that is, in fact, the 
texture for the destination signs. Next we have the mesh for the destination sign. The auto create for this is set to 1, that means that it is always visible. If it were set to 0, that would mean that it would be always hidden unless the mesh tells it to be visible. So that tells me that no matter what, the destination sign is always visible. It also looks like the destination sign is animated the same way that most things are animated in this game. So it's not uh, script based, it's just animation based. And it's attached to the locomotive using an attachment point. Okay. I don't think the attachment point is required for the script to work, but it might be. It depends. And it also says that it's attached to the default mesh. And you also see animation loop speed. That basically tells the game how fast you want the animation to play. It's set to 0 0.5. That means it'll play at half the speed that it was animated at. Now underneath that, it also has effects and then skin 2 because the other texture replacement was called skin. The other one, the, the second one is named skin 2 in order to differentiate them because if they were both given the same name, then when you save it, the game would only uh, pay attention to one of them and then it, it would ignore the other one. So they both had to have a different name. And the second one is also a texture replacement and it replaces the exact same texture. What that tells me is every single part of the locomotive that has a texture replacement has to be labeled separately. So if you have another part of the locomotive that isn't part of the destination sign, but also you want it to be affected by the texture replacement, then it has to have a different name. Also, in a lot of these scripted locomotives, it matters what you call the meshes. If you call them the wrong thing, then the script won't be able to pick up on them. Over here where it says fonts, that tells the game how many fonts of running numbers there are on the locomotive. I'm not sure if there's a limit to how many fonts there can be, but um, I can't imagine anyone needing 100 fonts, so... <laughs> Fun fact, when I was a kid, I kept misreading font as front, so I thought this was telling the game how many fronts the locomotive had, i.e. how many fronts facing cabs. So I thought for a locomotive like this, the number would be 1, and for a locomotive like the HHP8, the number would be 2. Imagine how confused I got when I saw one that had 3 fonts. <laughs> and here is yet another string table which again I think is related to the drop down menu that appears when you try to select a destination sign. I'm not entirely sure what all these words mean though so again I'm just going to remove one one by one and see what happens to the script when that happens. There's also a German string table for some reason. I'm not sure if there's a reason for that script wise. Oh and there's also a Japanese one. Interesting fact though, in the older installments of this game, Japanese symbols could not appear on this thing, so it would just look like a bunch of squares. I think this game still has that problem with Russian symbols. I do see the word string table over here in the script, so there has to be a reason for it. Alright, that's all I have for this video, as it's getting kind of long at this point. In the next video in this series we're going to be exploring the script more thoroughly. This was just an introductory video after all. Anyway, that's all I have for this video and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.